Welcome to the Welsh Yogi Podcast. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Merry Christmas. Welcome everyone to the Welsh Yogi Podcast. With Gopal Roy and Bakarupa. Nice. I thought that would be a cl- check clapping. Bakarupa, sometimes known as Ben. I was calling you earlier. You should change your ringtone. Is that going to happen? Change your ringtone. It just vibrates. No, you have, you have, you have voice message. Oh, okay. I'll turn you down now. Anyway. Hello. Benjamin. Isn't <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin. Yeah, we were talking about that, how that's one of the most viewed podcasts that we've got is Ben gets a new name. Hmm. It's interesting. I was at home and what's going on? Keep calling me. Like, no, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> My mother and everyone kept calling me Ben. And I was just a bit like, "Who's Ben?" <laughs> around around here, I'm, I'm back to Rupa. Hmm. Interesting. That. Or many other names. Have you could, uh, I got a couple of names. Can't speak on the podcast. I got some graffiti names. I got some video game names. Hmm. What was your name in the video in the video games? Kelf. Kelf. C E L F. It means art in Welsh. Uh-huh. Aha. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Kelf. But I think in Welsh you pronounce it Kelv because uh-huh. F is a V. Fascinating, right? Mm-hmm. But it reminds me of Black Sabbath song. My name, it means nothing. My fortune means less. My future is shrouded in dark wilderness. But no, like that, uh, the idea that the name means nothing really. In reality. I mean, I mean, in, you know, it used to mean something. Mm. Do you know? Like Krishna has many different names because, unlimited names actually because he has unlimited activities. You know, like, it used to be someone like now you've got um I don't know, someone's called something, you know, Mr. Carpenter. Yeah. Or Mr. Uh, the family's the Morgans. Huh? Do you know where the Morgans? Why is that? Because there's a there's a clan that, that came up from Africa through Spain called the Moor clan. Uh-huh. And apparently they settled in, in Celtic in Wales basically. Right. So anyone who called Morgan is uh-huh. related to that Moor clan. So exactly. But you see there's a lot of Welsh people that have like dark hair. And tan skin, like Tom Jones. Uh huh. Like, how has that happened? It's because the Moors have come up. I see. They've mixed with the Celts. You know what I mean? Yeah. So is, I go a bit of that blood as well. Like, I go brown. Yeah. yeah. I don't go pink. So, uh. I just go completely burnt. Yeah. It's like, there's no. It's like a pale or burnt. Yeah. It's quite, probably from this part of the world, that's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. The, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the point. Yeah. Like, names used to mean something. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Oh, that's. You know, like Arjuna would have do some glorious act, you know, in ancient India, and then he would get another name according to his activities, and you probably had the same mm. in all different cultures. So, it, yeah, names do mean something. Mm. Now they don't, because now it's like, I mean, not not with not in every case. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But a lot of the time, it's oh, I'll just call them this na- first name because it's because of the sound. Oh, it's the top name on Google search. Yeah, this year. yeah. Like I call them Apple. <laughs> Apple. That's the name of that's the name of Coldplay. Lead in Coldplay. His his daughter. Yeah. Apple. I mean, it's a nice name. It is right. But uh, I, was, I was over Christmas with my um, in my wife's with my wife's family, and she has a a cousin called Honey. Honey. And I thought yeah, I thought I thought that's quite a nice name. She was like, it's a condiment, you know. Mm. I've got a name of condiment. You know, she was joking and stuff, you know, back. It was, you know, it's quite a nice name sort of thing. Yeah, but yeah names used to mean something. You used to be able to buy someone's name. They, then, okay, this person, this is person that has activities or, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. anyway. So, that's why, in the, you know, if when one takes up spiritual life seriously, generally, the in, you know, the Hare Krishna movement, you'd be called something Das, which means servant. You have a nice, nice name of Krishna mm. that means something. You know, my name's Gopal Roy Das. So Roy means prince, and Gopal's, you know, a cowherd. So Krishna, Krishna is known as prince of the cowherds. Mm-hmm. So he's known as Gopal Roy. And then Das is servant. I'm, I'm not Gopal Roy, I'm the servant of Gopal Roy. Mm-hmm. You know, simply Bhakta Rupa is the name of Lord Chaitanya, when Krishna wanted to taste the highest mellows of love, to taste what it's like to be in love with him. He came as Bhakta Rupa, Bhakta. What's the verse? Panchatat from a come Krishna and back to Rupa Swoop, come back to Avatar and back to Kim Nami, back to Shakti come. Do 
you know what I mean? So he comes as Lord Chaitanya, who's also known as Bhakti Rupa. So it's Bhakti Rupa Das. And the devotee's names mean something, and they, they sound nice, you know. They're related to spiritual advancement. Yeah, yeah. It's a far out name, Bhakti Rupa. How you was your Christmas? Oh, my Christmas. Yeah, it was right. I went to see my mother. Yeah. She right? Yeah, she right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So you had some self. Sal- yeah, you told me before the podcast started, you had some self help stuff. Yeah, I did. Um, so I'm interested because recently I've been going into to help some of the devotees because a lot of the time what we have to deal with is 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 isn't necessary. You know, is we want to pla- we want to practice spiritual life, and the Bhagavad Gita deals with a lot of the obstacles that have come up. Like yesterday, I was on a Zoom call because we are going to do a talk in the university with the Meditation Society and to help with like wellness and mental health and. So we're going to go do a talk on how to. Um, we were discussing and the, you know the topics we were coming close to. You know how to deal with the mind. Mm. Um, you know with references from Bhagavad Gita. So you know, but there's a lot of other you know there's a lot of help out there on how to deal with the mind. So one book I bought for the devotees and I bought for myself to have a look through was. Can't remember CBT. But it's about CBT. Okay. It's about cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm. So I don't know anything about it yet. Cause I haven't read the book, but okay. <laughs> but I'm into that sort of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's <laughs> it's important though, because sometimes you get in the spiritual life, and like the beginner's mentality is that, you know, everything that's not a Prabhupada book is Maya. You know what I'm saying? Or like everything that's <laughs> Like um, mm. not directly related to Krishna consciousness. That's Maya. That's illusory. It's, it, I've got no concern for it. Yeah, and that's you know that's natural. It's like, good. Like Sri Prabhupada wrote in Science of Self Realization. Someone was having a go at it. You know, he said actually when you when you first grow a plant, it's very very you know it can be blown over very very easily. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So you have to protect it quite strictly. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean so it can grow? And when it's a bit stronger, then it can withstand some of the heavier winds. You know. So he said, you know, the new do- and our new practitioners, if they sometimes seem a bit fanatical, it's okay. You know, mm. just give it some time. Anyway, so yeah, it's better than that, that than the other way where you're too lackadaisical. Yeah, and yeah. You, and it's better be you can be better be too tight. Yeah. It's easier to be too tight and to loosen up than to be too loose and tighten up. Exactly. Yeah. But that's the thing is like as you as you over the years, you ca- kind of learn that actually there's you know, there's you can take stool from a dirty gold from a dirty place or something like that, isn't it? Like, <laughs> there's so you can take stool. From <laughs> you can take stool from stool. Yes, but no, that's there's actually like resources that you can use that help kind of bolster your kind of spiritual life in a sense that you can you have. Like, I definitely realize, okay, I got all these material things I got to deal with actually before I even get into the spiritual stuff seriously. Like, there's obstacles in in the form of my material conditioning, you know. Ah, ah. That directly relates to what I was reading in Bhagavad Gita this morning, okay. in the eighteenth chapter. What part, you know, when Krishna says that if you renounce things, then he talks about proper renunciation. Mm-hmm. And Sri the Prabhupada talks about, yeah, those those activities that actually help us advance spiritually, they should be accepted, mm-hmm. even if at first they don't seem. Um, to be on the perfect standard. Mm. But if you renounce them artificially, then it's actually false renunciation. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're it's something, Yukta Vyagra, isn't it? Vy- r- Yugra. Mm. How do you say it? Yukta Vyagra, yeah. Vyagra. Vyagra. How do you say it? Yukta Vyagra. Vyagra is... Oh, Vyagra. Vyagra is, yeah, renunciation. Yukta. It's like, so, basically learning how to use anything in... Krishna's service kind of idea, like isn't it? Like you renounce things, and if they're not helping you serve Krishna, but you accept things like you said that seem like they might not be, if they are going to help your service. So stuff like cognitive behavioral therapy helps you con- like deal with your mental health because we're all kind of messed up in this modern age that we live in. Is so much mixed signals and messages coming over the internet and. There's a whole atmosphere. Yeah. As Keisha Bharti Maharaj was saying, it's just the whole atmosphere now is just charged with all of these things yeah. flying around all the time. It's heavy duty and it's hard to deal with without like 
a real plan or because mm-hmm. I was re- I, yesterday I was listening to an audio book called the the war of art the war of art mm-hmm. and it's by Stephen Pressfield I read it a long time ago but I revisited it and it basically talks about um, um, a thing called resistance so when we're doing anything whether it's creative creative like work like making paintings writing or even like anything that's going to benefit us spiritual life anything that's going to be good for us uh, every single person who tries to do something better for themselves they they come up against this thing that he calls resistance Mm -hmm. and basically the resistance is like it's pulling you in the opposite direction it's trying to make you not do that thing that you were born to do you know like um so we we feel this like uh, I'll do it tomorrow or, or uh, I don't want to do it or you do anything not to do the thing that you know you should do deep down, and he calls it resistance and he talks about the importance of coming up with a plan. It's funny because he quotes Bhagavad Gita in there as well. Yeah. I read it a long time ago. He he, he quoted um he had, uh, you have the right to perform your prescribed duty, but you're not entitled to the fruits of action. Never consider yourself the cause of the results of your activities and never be attached to not doing your duty. Everyone loves that verse. So Everyone, boy, who comes to this, you know, he's got it tattooed in some car many of the cars, then my Pulsukadach and I'm at Kamrupoli. We went to San Jose, a car many. But yeah, he was saying, like, we have to, we all have a thing that we are born to do in one sense, like a duty in this world. And we should do it, but we should do it. And it was an interesting book because he just talks about doing things in a way that you do them dutifully. You turn up every day, you do what you're supposed to do. Mm. You have this routine that you do, and you you're not attached to the results of actions. You're not so it, it's yeah. like it's like that. Um, if you're making a painting, but you're like, I'm going to make this painting so that I'm going to be a famous artist and everyone's going to love me and bow down to me and respect me, that's the wrong motivation. Mm-hmm. You should do it like almost a, like you should do it as a service to Krishna. That's the highest. Like, okay, I'm I'm just doing this painting to please Krishna, and I'm not expecting anything in return. And it, that applies to anything. Yeah, and that's high yoga. Do you know what I mean? Because a lot of and there's and this a lot of people on the yoga, you know get stuck on this on the yoga stage of Kamadi Vrikara stay. It must pull us you know, a lot of like I said, a lot of a lot of Indians will know that verse. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But that's not the summit no. of yoga. You know, like you said, it's okay, I you know, because that verse, okay, I perform my scribe duties are not attached to the results of activities I don't consider myself the doer of activities I'm not attached to not doing my duty either so I do my duty mm. but like you touched on but the reason why you do your duty mm. that's like the next level of yoga yeah. and I think it is interesting how it is it is difficult you know that that stage of yoga which is karma karma state doing your duty mm. do you know what I mean and and first of all finding out what you, you know it's a difficult, it's, you know, that stage is difficult yeah. sort of thing. And that's the sort of stage that a lot of us do struggle with because it's hard to do because you're battling your mind and, you know what I mean? It's Especially just, figuring out what is my duty? Like, what am I, what is my, what is my purpose? Like, what is the set of attributes I have that I'm supposed to utilize in this lifetime, even materially, you know, like a lot of people. So this is leads quite nicely onto another thing that I was looking into called, um, you basically, you you create something called an anti vision. Uh-huh. So what it is is you put put your mind one year in the future, and you just think of all of the things that you don't want to be. So, uh-huh. so, so you, <laughs> it's in, it really was helpful for me. So like um, f- for me it was like I don't want to not be attending temple programs. I don't want to be hanging out. I don't want to not be hanging out with the the devotees. I don't want to. I don't want to always be on my mobile phone. You know. And I also don't want to be um, like sidetracked by being like overly obsessed with like, because I, I got this mentality where I do get overly obsessed with painting and art and creativity. And I put that as my anti-vision. I don't want to be this person that's like making art for myself, for my own f- pleasure and fun, but making it about Krishna sort of, but not really. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like anyway, I created this whole anti-vision. And then what you basically do is flip everything. So... Okay, I, I, my anti-vision is I don't want to be not coming to the programs. So my vision is that I want to be coming to the programs. So it's a good way of like the things that we're scared of are actually the things that we will, will happen to us naturally if we don't check ourselves. So the resistance will drag us there. Do you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So yeah, like, it's very interesting. So like if, if I follow the, the voice inside of me saying, no, don't do that or, or you know, like... <laughs> 
if I follow my resistance. Yeah, because I'm just thinking now. Because yeah, my anti my anti vision. Is actually where I am right now. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, for me, yeah. it is all. It is all I'm I hitting my anti vision every year, <laughs> but it is though, isn't it? I'm like, is the I'm just I just quickly did it. Like as you're yeah. talking about it, so my, but I don't know. I haven't really thought about it much, but, but, but I'm just thinking now. My anti vision mm-hmm. of where I am in a year is where I would go naturally yeah. if I wasn't checking exactly. myself in any form of activity. 100%. And which is really odd. Yeah. If you don't have a goal, <laughs> if you don't have a goal, then you're just going to go anywhere, isn't it? Like, you need to have that vision. Otherwise, you're just going to get dragged. Like, even... I guess because I, I know... I guess because I know what I'm, I'd be... It's, the, it's our it's nature. It's good, yeah. It's good, yeah. It's like the, the aeroplane. It's got a target, but the driver's always flying it back onto the line, you know? Yeah, it's like when your car's... You know, the tracking's gone in your car. Mm. You know what I mean? And you've always got to keep turning it. Yeah. to one one direction otherwise if you just let it go it'll just naturally just go yeah completely off track so then th- so this now we're coming up to new year it's a good time to always check in people generally do that around this time of year but like spend a bit of time m- make an anti-vision okay what don't i want to be then then create your vision and then that's what this stephen pressfield was saying is like okay what are the things you have to do every day step by step every day you just create a routine that keeps you on track, keeps you online with your vision, you know, and, and, and really get a bit meticulous and make a plan. Hmm. And, and then be, if you ever sat in a car with you, maybe be single pointed on that plan. You know, so much is, is so help, is so helpful, all this stuff. Like, mm. you know, be, like a lot of what Vaishesh Gupta was doing at the minute, like he's sending videos out mm. and he's very advanced in spiritual life. Mm. But his videos, in one sense, they just, they don't, he doesn't talk about spiritual life mm. at all. Chaitanya Charan calls it pre-spiritual. Uh-huh. It's like um, Jay Shetty does the same thing. Mm-hmm. Like um, so, it's thing. It's not yet spiritual, but it's setting up the soil yeah. for that spiritual seed to go in nice. You know? And it's, it's exactly what Krishna set up in the in the. He doesn't. Krishna does it in the Bhagavad Gita, although mm. Krishna's quite you know quite direct. But in terms of the way he wants society set up, if you think about Varanasram and all these other things. Mm. Do you mean? And this, and especially today, there's so much people need to do. That, that's not very hard. Mm. In fact, it's quite easy and it's enjoy. But pe- people benefit from if they do before, or helps them practice spiritual life. You know, pra- practicing spiritual life will surcharge everything. It'll give flavor and taste to everything you do, and and it can be done immediately, sort of thing. But you know, these things like you know, like you should set a goal. You know, write down a goal. You know, writing things down. Mm, amazing. You know, or like the the whole thing of circulance of influence and circulance of concern. Mm. Do you know what I mean? What things affect me now? What can I do about them? Mm. You know, write down practically what I can do, and then do it. And the things that you can't do anything about, well, they just have to go in. You know, put them in a separate box, departmentalize them in your mind, and then things be. You know, just learning how to. It's it's yoga really, but learning how to deal with the mind and you know deal with yourself and all this stuff and yeah, it's, yeah I like that pre spiritual. Yeah, yeah, it's important as well. But then there's the danger, the pitfall. Like I was reading, listening to this War of Art book, and like there was all of this solid philosophy in there, but then the whole last chapter was all kind of mental speculation. Like it yeah. was, this is what know. I believe about this. He he was he started talking about all kinds of in, like unusual like you're talking about there's greek gods that give inspiration for writing and if you pray yeah. to the greek gods and it was there was a lot of it wasn't like because that's the beauty of Prabhupada's books they're such a solid stone yeah that's the thing and, and when we get these things like when i that's when i f- have most faith and that's when it helps me most and that's actually only when i do it mm. is when vaisheshika prabhu or someone i know is practice spiritual life very seriously when they give me this stuff yeah yeah then I can know, okay, I can accept this because, you know, this person has, like you said, yukta vairagya. Yeah. So I've, t- or taken the gold from the, the, the soil or, yeah, t- yeah. you know, t- like, like I said, a swan will, you know, if you put milk in water, it can drink the milk without drinking the water. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a way of, um, filters out the, taking the, taking the essence of something. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And sometimes you can get, you know, I guess you can be materialistic, but still have some ideas that are crack, like a yeah. broken clock can be right twice a day, you know? So. Mm. And that's what a lot of people are attracted to. Like I had this book before, I was attracted to it. 
stoicism, like all of these different philosophical yeah. points, which are so solid. And they're like the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, like mm-hmm. how to do your duty, how to be detached, how to... That's because sometimes people in life, you stumble upon a truth. Yeah, yeah. You know, and when you stumble upon a truth, it's like, whoa, mm. this is true mm-hmm. in this in this world of ignorance, you know, in the world of nescience. Sometimes uh, people, everyone's in the dark. You know, you pop out of your mother's room. I don't know what the hell's going on. Mom, dad, do you know, what do I do? They're like, I don't know. I've just popped out as well. And we're just in this world. And I don't know. Do you know what I mean? And so it's all, everyone's just fumbling around in the dark. But when you stumble upon a truth, yeah. then it's like, it oh my deep. God. You know? It's deep. Yeah. That's, that's what I used to call it. Like um, when I was listening to music, I'd say, wow, that was a really psychedelic lyric. And by psychedelic, <laughs> I just meant truth. Like, yeah, yeah. wow, it's talking about the truth. So, like, that's why, you know, like, people, I keep talking about Black Sabbath, isn't it? But, like, his lyrics, they, he, touched on, <laughs> he touched on the truth. You He's know? brought a new song now. I was always uh, nice. uh, I'm not interested in his new stuff. But isn't it? There's like, a, there's I, I listened to it on, uh, I see Facebook or something. Mm. And it's it's absolutely amazing. Serious. And the fact that he's, like, 70 or, so, or yeah. older, and he's produced it, it's, and he's still just brought out an absolute classic really? at this age. Uh, in terms of heavy metal music, of course. Yeah, I was going around um, in Bristol, but there was this heavy metal pub, and I yeah. just went around there at the end of the day, like just getting collection donations. like, And the music was on there, and it was proper... My, I was just loving it. I don't even know why people get conditioned, but I just like heavy metal for some reason. Like, uh-huh. I never used to, and I can understand why people don't like it, but... <laughs> but anyway, that's the modes, isn't it? Yeah, it's the modes. I got into the lower modes, so basically, that's it. Mode of ignorance. Yeah, same, yeah. But there's truth, there is truth in these things, and that's, but the the danger is you have the truth, and it's mixed with something that's not the truth, and then you get yeah. confused. Or you or you project, because you so, you want truth so much. Yeah. So, like, I used to just, you know, I used to listen to Chili Peppers lyrics, mm. Anthony Kiedis, mm. and I used to project. You know, and I was going through like, you know, how old was I? Probably 18, 19. And I was have, you know, I was like heavy on drugs. I hope my mum doesn't listen to this. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm going through all these like psychedelic experience. And I'd project my experiences onto these lyrics. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, he must have had this experience. I wonder what the yeah. wave meant. Yeah, I had experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, once you get a bit of distance and you yeah. start to see like, oh, actually, he, you know. He doesn't have a clue what he's on about you. Yeah. <laughs> but but at the same time is like because I find when we're on book distribution and there's a busker singing, it become it you can it becomes very spiritual sometimes. Like you hear a lyric and it reminds you of Krishna in yeah. a certain way. I apply it all to Krishna. Yeah. You know, I was my first you know, I I started going to the temple. Then like literally the, the next week or the next program, they said, Oh, do you want to come to Rathiatra? I've talked about this before, surely. Anyway, and I was I was just listening to listening to music the whole way up on my headphone. It's just because I was on a bus full of Hare Krishna sort of practitioners, and they because we started early, they started doing their meditation, you know, and the beads. Yeah. And there's a whole bus full of them, so everyone's going Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare 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 Krishna. And I and I don't I've never experienced that before. I hadn't been into a program where they introduced me to beads and chanting or anything. <laughs> So, you know what I mean? So I was like, "Whoa, what do you, you know?" It's when the first guy did it, yeah, yeah. you know, his name's Sadash, Sadashiva. He's absolutely phenomenal devotee. Yeah. He just said, you know, he just oh, how you doing? Sat down and he just went for it. And I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, what's he doing?" Like, you know, is he having some sort of like episode? Yeah. Anyway, and then everyone started to. So I just plugged my. I was, I was like, I don't know what's going on here. I'm on a bus yeah. full of lunatics. I'm gonna put my headphones in and just listen to music all the way up. You know. Mm. Anyway, I had a really nice time. And then you know when we got there, we had a whole festival. And then uh, on the way back, then I was speaking to Raddy Kesh. Mm. You know, he's very. He is the coolest. He is the coolest. Yeah. He's the coolest guy in the world. Like yeah. you know. And uh, anyway, if we have a, if his kirtans and just him. He's ch- when he's really because I shared a room with him. He was like my mentor for the first few years, you know. And I'd if I had a tough day, you know, he'd just he would be, he would just sit down and be she'd just be so chill, mm. and he'd always be singing sweetly, or playing the guitar, like you know, mm. and singing these bhajans. And anyway, he he said all music that you listen to because everything's about Krishna, mm. and that was like my first lesson. He said, everything's about Krishna ultimately. Because Krishna says, if you see anything that's beautiful 
or attractive in this world mm. it's a it's like a sh- it's a shadow and of his beauty and ultimately that he's the source of it because he's the source of everything you know that's what that's what it means to be absolute truth you know that he's absolute you know everything else is relative to the absolute truth mm. right so there's no so it's, everything is connected to krishna mm. there's nothing that's not connected to krishna sorry you just told me you divide because everything's relative everything could exist or not exist mm. Do you know what i mean but the absolute has to exist and things only exist because he exists yeah. anyway so everything comes from krishna so mm. it's like yeah you know anything any music that you listen to so that's why i think on book distribution sometimes when something comes and it's very nice and especially when it's like a you know like a love song yeah you know and and this feeling of this feeling of love that we have in this world is a reflection of the love that the living entity has for the supreme personality of god yeah it's powerful and especially when you because that like you say if something there's something about giving out books if people come on the msf they might get a splash of it monthly sangatan festival mm-hmm. but there's something about it especially if you're struggling and like I remember I've had ex- sorry go, go on, on. You, well I just had experiences like because Krishna he orchestrates everything you know yeah. I have experiences where I've like you know internally I'm, I'm having like um, some sort of like you know there's some you know some groove that you're going on you know what I mean and I'm thinking of, you know some meditation yeah. and uh, and something magical will happen I'll give someone a book yeah. you know and I'll, you know sometimes you speak stuff that you know is like okay what the, that's not coming from me you know what I mean it's like a, on, a, on a, just a higher vibe like a conduit yeah. for, for some higher message right? you know and they have this give someone a book on transcendental knowledge and there's nothing like that and they you know they appreciate it and it's a spiritual experience mm. and I'm like whoa I'm like floating and then the busker I'll just ride on tune start singing this song yeah, yeah. you know what i mean and it's like the whole thing's been orchestrated and the world's full of love and it's like <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> yeah i had a there was one i had in cardiff and i was just getting really everyone was rejecting me like everyone was ignoring me i don't become i was just come on, <laughs> on i was getting so upset though like i was so I was struggling so much so i went into the shopping center and I just got my phone out and i started writing a prayer to krishna mm-hmm. like saying look i'm struggling here blah 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 blah, blah. Like a, just a, I wrote a prayer. Anyway, I went back out on the street, and this guy comes up to me. He just walked up to me. He goes, "Hey, man, is it okay if I if I play some music?" Mm-hmm. I was like, I was, <laughs> and he he was like this boy I've never seen before. He had dark complexion as well, like uh-huh. Krishna, you know. I was like, "What the heck?" I was like, "Yeah, whatever. Why are you asking me?" Like, uh-huh. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I don't care. And then he started. You know that song, Riptide? No. Baby, I'm going out to the Riptide. Anyway, it goes, there's one lyric in it. It goes, I love you when you're singing that song, but I've got a lump in my throat because you're going to sing the that. words wrong. Uh-huh. It's like, it's like, I just want to, I just want to know if you're going to, if you're going to stay. I just got to, I just got to know. I can't have it any other way. Uh-huh. So I was like, oh my God. Like, Krishna's just testing if I'm going to stick around. Like yeah, yeah. all the hard, t- <laughs> all these people are ignoring me, and I'm getting smashed. And he loves it when I'm singing that song, the Hare mm-hmm. Krishna. But he's got a lump in his throat because I might sing it wrong. I might run away. Like, and it was just so tuned up. And after he finished that song, he just stood up and walked away, and I never saw him again. It was like, <laughs> I was just like, what on earth was that? But you know, I've had, I've had, I talk about it because if they've listened this deep into the podcast, then they're, they're probably yeah into it. But uh, I remember when I first started going out, giving out books. Because we just finished our book marathon, so it's on everyone's mind. It's on our mind, anyway. Mm. Um, I remember going out. And it was just the first... And I, and, and this happened for, like, the first maybe, like, say, six to six to 12 months of me going out on book distribution in Swansea. And really just sincerely, you know... I was much more sincere when I first, you know... We all were, I think, didn't we? And... Uh, <laughs> I used to I used to meet this boy, right? And I used to like I try to give him a book, and the way and he would just he would speak to me. He was a Christian, mm. but he was the most far out. And he was my you know he was my I was twenty. He was probably like I don't know eight, eighteen or something, you know. Mm. And he was the most spiritual far out Christian, <laughs> like like he was on this completely other level. And he had this energy, 
Wow. You know, when people come up and they have this real tangible energy of, you know, and they, and when, so when you're with him, he was he had this spirit, like almost like a spiritual energy, yeah. and you felt very very pleased oh. to 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 be there with him, like you know, and uh, you know, I'd be trying, and he'd be just giving me this like really far out advice, you know, and uh, I felt like we had like a real connection, and I remember when I gave him a, gave him a book, and he would thank me, and he would t- then talk about. God and Jesus, and as, as he was talking, tears would come in his eyes. Oh my God! And he'd talk about in Swansea, in Swansea, yeah. And he'd talk about how it's sad how these people don't know, mm. you know. I just and I was like, flipping hell! <laughs> <laughs> super advanced, don't you? Like, I, yeah. And I, I just like, and every time I just, you know, I was giving out books, and you know, I'd, I'd just meet him a few times, and then I've never seen him ever, mm. you know. He's no idea there. where he's, he's gone. Sent, like, he got sent into your path I think, just for... You know, looking back on it, I think we were sent to each other. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because mm. even though he had so much, he had so much love in his heart mm. for people, mm. for God, you know, and he would appreciate these concepts of how everyone's a soul. And mm. But, you know, if he, if he'd become a devotee, you know what I mean? If he had the access to the knowledge mm. that was given in Bhagavad Gita and Sriman Bhagavatam, you know, the knowledge of God and who God is and what he does, you know what I mean? If he had that access then, you know what I mean, where you know, where would he where would he be now? Like, you know? Yeah. So I think, you know, we had we had an effect on each other. Yeah. You know, it's almost like he was like he had the good feeling, but he had you know, I was the one holding all the books. Like, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I, I don't know. It's interesting, isn't it? That's why I say if you listen this far into the podcast you can you Just do meet you meet vibe, some yeah. meet some far out people. So, like I was in Exeter. <laughs> this is a weird one. Right? I was in Exeter once, and I had like the book table out. I had some books, and there's like this really. He lo- he's, he looked really young, but he was like very. He had like dirty dreadlocks, and he was like a dirty coat, and he was very filthy with a beard. And he walked up to me, and he goes, Just, he, "He looked at the book, and he goes, Wow, I love Lord Krishna," and and I felt like what you. I just felt this like bliss off him like it was just, I was just like I was like Phew. some people are like yeah, some yogis like, that we meet like yeah you know? I was just like what the hell and then he's just like he gave me this like big shiny eyed look and then he's just like Harry Krishna and then he just like walked off yeah. and if you looked at him he looked like some homeless crazy man yeah. but like he came up to me and he's just like I love Lord Krishna yeah. like he was just so like and that's the some thing personality that, that. <laughs> or it could be because what happens is you know when people are on like heavy psychedelics <laughs> Then you have other living entities that cut because they all yes. the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have high. There's higher and negative living entities influencing mm. people. Mm. You know, Priya couldn't. He's an amazing book distributor. He was up in Aber- Aberystwyth, and he met someone who's like a mystic. Mm. And Priya, being the cynic, who which I agree with, he goes, "No, you're not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, you're not. Just take a book and yeah." <laughs> don't stop thinking you're a mystic because loads of people think they're mystics and yeah, not yeah, like yeah. you know but uh, they just got a crystal in their pocket and but, he's, but this mystic was like telling stuff about his life and saying oh, you always do you always do this clicking thing it means you've got good you've got good a good e- you've got a good um, oh, like living entity you've got a good spirit who's looking after you yeah. you know because you keep doing this thing on your hand like clicking with your nails you know and he's like and Priya goes no I don't, I don't do that you know just <laughs> like he's, he's <laughs> But uh, he goes to his wife, and his wife says, "You always do that. You know, it annoys me. I talk about it all the time. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. so you have these living entities that are constantly influencing, mm. you know, people. And and so if you're open like that, there may be some fortunate guardian angel of this mm. living entity swooped in and said, "I love Krishna. Give me the book." You know, mm. I think that's what this Stephen Pressfield winding it back to there. At the end, he was coming up with all of this kind of speculation about these different muses. But I could see that he was describing basically some kind of demigod influence. Because mm-hmm. he was talking about how when he writes, stuff comes out that he didn't even think of. It just comes out. Mm-hmm. If, if he turns up every day and does his duty, then this magic comes out of him. Mm-hmm. So he was attributing. He didn't know what it was. Yeah, it could be a higher living entity. You <laughs> yeah. know? That's what I mean. If you listen to this round of podcasts, like generally we should only speak stuff that's you know backed up by scripture. Yeah. yeah. But this is just us. This, this, like. this is just us talking, like you know. Yeah. Don't sue us. <laughs> don't, don't sue us. Like, yeah. 
You know what I mean, some of the stuff that you know might be wrong. Like, you know, yeah, exactly. But it's, it's just interesting. But there are, you know, there are, you know, the there's fact a, that living entities are, in, you know, oh that's true. There's, there, true. there's a whole mystical realm outside there. Mm-hmm. This is one thing that is kind of interesting and it is kind of scripture as well. I was reading Vishaka's book. Yeah. And apparently they were on a morning walk with Prabhupada. So Prabhupada, he used to go on a morning walk every day at seven. Uh-huh. Or it's about now. And uh, they'd, uh-huh. they'd ask Prabhupada questions and he'd give answers. So apparently Vishaka, she said, she said to, Tar- uh, to Prabhupada, <laughs> She like she asked. She said, "Hey, Shri Prabhupada, I read in the Bhagavad Gita that the moon gives juice to the vegetables. It gives the flavor yeah, to the yeah. vegetables." She said, "How does this work?" And then Prabhupada just like looked her in the eyes, very deeply looked her in the eyes for like what felt like ten seconds, you know. <laughs> and then Prabhupada just looks her in the eyes and he says, "Why don't you ask him?" And then he carried on walking. And Vishaka was like, what the hell? <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and she asked, what, how does the moon give the, when you ask the moon. flavor to vegetables? Hmm. And Prabhupada said, why don't you ask the moon? Yeah, yeah. So like his point was, because she was a very heavy atheist, yeah, like yeah. very pragmatic. And okay, what's the science behind how the moon? Mm-hmm. And he was making the point, you know, there's a personality behind the moon. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a personality behind every aspect of this reality. Like mm-hmm. you say, there's beings that are influencing us, influencing us at all times. Mm-hmm. The rivers there's personalities everywhere mm-hmm. so why don't you ask the moon you know mm-hmm. it's, it's just the way she described it it's like so deep she was like whoa the moon's a person yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> why didn't you ask her just ask the moon but I, I sometimes do that when I do book distribution in a different town and I cross over the a, a river in that town I pray to the river I'm like yo river I'm in your town please let me help you know <laughs> let, me engage, let me engage some of these people here Let's, let's give them some books. Let them give some donations. Let's make this happen. You know? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to get all the help you can get in exactly, it. Exactly, yeah. Anyway, we've gone proper off the... Uh, yeah. It's all right, don't it? Yeah, yeah, you know. It's, it's, it's good. Well, that <laughs> nice. Thanks for listening. <laughs> See you next time. Lots see you, of love. See you in six weeks. No, we've got to do more podcasts. Yeah, we should. It was lovely. If you yeah. listen to this one, you can tell, like, so actually, so one thing is people have been listening to them. Maybe, you know, we can talk about this at the start of the next podcast, maybe. Mm. Thank you, everyone. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh, Hare by Krishna. the way, do your anti-vision and uh, your vision and get mm. planning. Yeah. I don't know why. Just and chant Hare Krishna mantra. Chant them. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Blind. Let's chant that mantra over and over again for the rest of your life. Try a lot, like too much. Try it when you're doing stuff as well. Yeah. And then you, then all the mystical stuff we talked about will happen to you. Harry Ball. Harry Ball.